Hello! Hey everyone, I'm Jordan. I'm Chris with PDQ.com. Alright, so let's start talking about uh, regular expressions. Mine is normally a frown. Uh, mine is just giddy, uh, uh, talking about smiles, happiness, and corgis. So, fits right in with regular expressions, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't, but I'm sure we could combine those with <laughs> regular expressions. Indeed! <laughs> let's dive in. All right. So, this, this uh, webcast about regular expressions, it's kind of freeform in, in one sense because there's so much to regular expressions to fit inside one half an hour, it's going to be very difficult. I'm hoping that if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask them. I mean, we're, we're here to, you know, look like fools as you ask them and answer them, try to, so yeah, give with, it a shot. With, with these, I always say I don't know anything about them, but there's so much information. You, it's weird what you can pull out after you've spent some time uh, yeah. studying them. I there's, there's a lot to it, but let's... Uh, Let's dive in there. There is. So, uh, first and foremost, I want to pull up a couple of resources that I like to use. I don't know about anybody else. Uh, Kobe might be different. Jordan might be different. Everybody's different. Woo! But one of the ones that I really like for a cheat sheet, because I don't care who you are, I don't care how long you've done radio expressions, unless you're doing it daily, you could benefit from a cheat sheet for those extra little references on what you're doing. I happen to like this uh, regexhero.net slash reference. It's easy to just Google regex hero cheat sheet, and you can find all the, the you know descriptions of what each of the uh, meta characters are going to be doing so it's fantastic for those of you who don't know what I'm showing you is it uses these uh, characters these meta characters to express in the form of code a pattern that's what regular expressions are so you can take hey all this text or this little bit of text and I want to extract certain patterns we do that with regular expressions absolutely yeah yeah so um, my favorite tool is just the regex 101 oh good one dot com and that one it doesn't have the f whole reference sheet, but in the bottom right corner down there, it does have a list of quick references where you can pull a lot of that uh, on the fly as you're going. Yeah. I'm a fan of this one because it, uh, it gives you the explanation over in the corner yes, as you exactly. go. Exactly. That is my favorite for that reason. So, just a quick example. We have uh, bat, cat, hat, and uh, we want to find and match, you know, cat. You can do a literal string and it's going to match cat. It's fantastic. And like JJ is saying, you can show you up here you know exactly what's going on. And so in this case, cat matches character's cat, literally. It's case sensitive. Uh, in PowerShell, which we're going to be showing today, it is uh, case insensitive by default if you're just using match and some other of the operators. So I like to check insensitive to make sure that the results are going to be the same. But there's sky's the limit of what you can do here, um, just knowing how to express that. In the case of a uh, character class here, inside square brackets, you can say any one of these characters, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, is okay. So with PowerShell by default, it does it insensitive. Can you force it to be case sensitive? Oh, let's say someone who doesn't know what they're talking about says uh, something else is awesome, but you're like, no, that's not correct. We're going to replace that with, you know, we want to replace something else with corgis. Corgis is awesome because grammar's hard. <laughs> <laughs> um, this. Yeah, let's 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 see. So I'm actually gonna be beep, beep, beep. there. We go. Yeah, or I can small it a little yeah, bit more. Not, uh, yeah. Yeah. So uh, one of the but just one of the things I want to call it is the replace operator, the split operator, the match operator. Um, what else we got? I, I'm pretty sure. Oh, yeah, switch. Uh, uh, you you can use regular expressions for all of these. Yeah. So uh, I just want to dive into a couple examples here. Uh, sound good? Absolutely. Um, I'm not going to discuss all the different things that are on this uh, cheat sheet because there's so many. There's a few here that are common. You're going to see stuff like a period or a question mark or an asterisk. All these mean different things and as I'm going along I will explain them but know that this is by no means an exhaustive description of regular expressions because we have this limited window, right? Okay, cool. Uh, one of the examples that I want to show and we're trying to think of some real old examples but before we dive into that, how many people, hands up me because I already know the question, have handled data that is not sanitized. Uh, well, I come from a location where I control all the incoming data, so it's exactly how I want it every time. Yeah, says no one ever, right? <laughs> you so, are the exception to the rule. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, let, let, give an example. You might have, uh, I think in your case, you had an HR department who fed you... Uh, yeah, so they decided to be the resource of record, and I had to create a bunch of Active Directory accounts based off the HR system, but they didn't use the right naming scheme. Yeah. Uh, I did not use regex, and it was weeks of work. Yay! <laughs> you could actually cut down on that by magic. In fact, maybe I'll switch back to ISC, because I have a, a quick little script I wrote to uh, demonstrate that. 
Um, so imagine you're handed a list of accounts. Uh, just let's in fact, I'll actually show you exactly what it looks like. It's just a CSV file. It just has these logins here. They're all Futurama related because, of course, they are. It's me and Jordan, actually. Futurama. Uh, so we have a bunch of records here. Uh, in this case, any user dot, you know, first dot last name is a regular user. Anything SVC underscore, you know, whatever, such as this guy is a service account. Anything prefaced with admin underscore or ad ADM underscore is an admin account. So maybe you have a big list. Maybe it's only whatever that is, 10, 12 accounts here, or maybe it's a thousand. I don't want to do that by hand and have to move them to the correct path, the correct OU that they need to live in. So what I would do, and I suggest that you do, is something like this. Um, scrolling down here, I'm just importing that list that we just referenced into this uh, variable uh, user list, and I'll show you. That's what it looks like. Hey, we got results. Here, we're going to use a switch to say, when this, do this, when this, do that, when that, do this, you know? And in this case, we're using regular expression here, using it here, and here. So what, in these ones, what does the uh, caret do for you? Good. So this caret symbol right here, which is this little funky little pyramid mountain looking thing that you may or may not be aware of, means the start of the string. So if you're looking to try and say, hey, what patterns am I looking for inside, you know, this bunch of characters? I want it to start with, in this case, SVC or admin or ADM. So the other thing here is inside these parentheses, a parentheses creates what's called a group, which then you can use to further break things down. I'm not going to show that yet. We'll get to it. But inside here, if you notice, I also have a pipe character. That's an alternation. Uh, it's a signal to say or. So in this case, I'm saying it needs to start with either admin or ADM and then needs to be followed by an underscore. Whoop, whoa, I'm doing things. Okay. And in which case it's going to say, hey, I realize that you mean an admin account. Go run this next command. This one, you remember this one, Jordan? Uh, that one, I believe, lowercase w is any letter in a word or anything that's in a word, and capital is anything that is a non word yes. character. So here we have lowercase backslash w's, which indicates a word or an alphanumeric character. Uh, the period has a special. Uh, Meaning, it's another meta character. It just means any character uh, except uh, uh, line break, I believe. In this case, the backslash before the period says take it as a literal. I literally mean a period, not the meta character period, which means any character but line break. So, in this case, we're going to say we want to have this alphanumeric character. Oh, and the plus is a quantifier, which means one or more up to infinity. Matches, stay greedy, grab all that you can. Grab that period, and then grab the same thing. You know, one or more alphanumeric characters until you can't, which means you're greedy. And in this case, with the backslash period, it means it's an actual period, not the meaning of the period, what will continue on until uh, end of line. Oh, yeah. Um, again, this is hyperspeed, so if you have any questions, do interrupt us. But I'm going to run this. We'll see what happens. We're going to run this script. And... For our benefit, we're going to see these results here that say, hey, we're creating a user account, Philip Fry, uh, Tarangalila, Bender Rodriguez, and all the way down, you see that it does make a distinction for service counts and admin accounts. In this case, the admin is both admin underscore and ADM underscore. So you could then use these uh, commands that I have currently commented out with the um, sharp sign, the new AD user. I'm not going to go into that today because the focus is not how do I create users in Active Directory? You can go Google that. I think I, one of us might have a blog on that. I, I don't know. We probably do. Uh, it is worth pointing out, with most things like replace or match, it does regex by default. With switch, he actually has to specify oh, that it's looking you. for regex. Good call. I, yes. Here, so when I'm doing switch on the logins inside that particular CSV, I am saying, in the case of each user.logins, because if you recall, when I look at the uh, user list, it has logins is the property. So in this case, when I'm referencing a particular login in this for each loop, I'm doing user.logins. So switch basically says for each case, a case statement you might be familiar with, it's the exact same thing. Dash re re uh, regex allows you to do regular expressions. Otherwise, it's not regular expressions. So good call. Good, good eye. Because uh, I forgot. But anyway, that's a quick way to do it. You could uncomment these out and create your users and go hog wild. Yeah? I don't know if anybody's in that, been in that situation, but I have. And it's not fun creating 100 users uh, by hand. No, it is not. Oh. Uh, anyway, uh, before I move on too quickly, I don't know if there's any questions that we want to approach before I get too off into a rabbit hole. 
Dear Chris and Jordan, what's a good resource for troubleshooting PowerShell scripts and why all the things are broken with it? Sincerely, Asaba Kadabra? Oh, uh, Asaba. <laughs> it's like ABBA, but with one B and an extra S. Um, it, it, other than that, the exact same. Yeah, that's how I work. See, you can actually do that using the dash replace operator, make ABBA. Yeah? Anyway, we're not going to do that. Um, what do you what what thoughts, Jordan? Well, uh, if you're using Visual Studio Code, which works with PowerShell, uh, and I have my complaints for Visual Studio Code, but when it comes to telling you what's wrong or what needs to be corrected, it is fantastic for, for pointing you in the right direction. Right. It uses the PS Script Analyzer, I believe, uh, which is a lovely resource to be able to tell you why things probably could be better or why they're broken. Uh, in when, one case, I know uh, an example of uh, that when well, people will see is when they do uh, comparisons like you're doing if, you know, this thing equals this or this whatever. A lot of people will do if this variable equals null and then, you know, script lock. Uh, I think the PS script analyzer, I, I believe it has a rule that says, no, the, the null operator needs to be on the left because it needs to force it to be a scaler, which is just like one object, blah, blah, blah. Um, do you know thoughts, Colby? Uh, that is correct. I if I remember, it has something to do with uh, nulls and arrays, and like you could get unexpected results if you have on the right. Yeah, I, I, with the array, if you have like two nulls within an array or something, or even number of nulls or something, it, it'll actually evaluate to true or something. It's something wacky like that. And that is something I actually didn't know was a thing until I used code, and it told me I've been doing yeah. it wrong for years. So, so that's a good way to troubleshoot it. Uh, other resources that I would stick to is post it somewhere, ask somebody, post it on the PowerShell subreddit, post it on the PowerShell Slack channel, even write on our forums. We'll, we'll help you out if, if we can see that. S sanitize it before you post it. You don't, uh, want, yeah. to put, <laughs> you don't want to put anything uh, that is yours out there. Yeah, don't put passwords, please. Don't put specific domain, like stuff, keep, keep it sanitized. No private keys. <laughs> yeah, oh my goodness, I, I just, my heart sank here. <laughs> even just imagine that, even more than passwords. <laughs> uh, I mean, you should treat it the same. Uh, be careful with your data, but yeah, post it somewhere. I don't have any other specific resources other than just ask questions and, and tackle it one bit at a time. But, but great question. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Should we uh, dive into another example? Sure. Okay, so uh, with this one, uh, one of the many things that as Jordan and I were planning for this, we were trying to think, what are some real world examples that we have encountered or might have encountered? And there's been so many that it's, you know, in one ear, out the other, I don't remember them. Would you? Yeah, I, I know I've, I've done them, and I've looked at scripts I have done that have them, yeah. and I'm not even sure what I put in there. So. Right, and so it, it becomes kind of a challenge um, to remember stuff, but I do remember that sometimes I have had to use command line utilities, you know, within PowerShell itself, to get the output and then parse that, you know, grab what I want from it to, to be able to manipul manipulate it. And one thought I had was, well, maybe if I was an administrator out in the field using one of our products, PDQ Inventory or PDQ Deploy, I might want to look at the settings to find out when my license expires and keep note of that. Absolutely. And also, with the, we always want to point out with the CL CLI tools with inventory, so this is just a great... Uh tie in here. Yeah, there's, there's a bunch here. PDQ inventory help. The one I'm going to focus on at this moment is this settings one because it has a lot of settings that are stored there. So PDQ inventory. Oh, I lost my cursor there. PDQ inventory. Settings. So there's a bunch of settings that are going to pop up here. Woo! I'm not going to... Yep, I may have did a thing because I'm smart. <laughs> um, with this, there's going to be this uh, subscription information. So I want to parse through that to get all the subscription related information. So I'm going to do that. In fact, I'm going to clear the screen here. Start from the top. And uh, what I want to do for this one, do you have any ideas? Uh, so the first thing we have to do is it's putting outputs. So we want to pipe that into a for each if we're going to. So cool. each line, because uh, with, with regex non-scalar, it, it messes with the uh, matches variable. Yes. And so for those of you who don't know, this is the same with you to use a dir command or get child item command. If you get a list of results, it's going to basically send each line of text as a uh, string inside a string array. So it's not like you're getting one big blob of text unless you tell it explicitly to do that. So in this case, that's what Jordan's saying. Okay. All right, and then it's going to be if. Okay. And pretty soon you're just going to start looking at our example instead of going off my uh, dollar sign underscore uh, dash matches. Match. Match. And yeah, and then this is where we'd put our uh, regex query, which. Okay. This is great. <laughs> yeah. So what is our what is our query? We're looking for subscription. So I'm going to do subscription. Let's actually build this on the fly. So if I'm doing this. Let's just look. There's a special variable that I want to call out with this example called matches. So when you do uh, use the match operator in PowerShell, if it's a scalar comparison that you're doing, it'll actually fill this uh, default variable called matches with the matches that it finds with 
uh, when doing and using the regular expression engine. Uh, but this case, what Jordan's uh, suggesting is because we have this this array with multiple strings here, we're saying for each one of these, you know, try and match it. And if there is a match, show me the matches. So in this case, if it matches the word subscription, literally this this string, I think that would give us uh, multiple responses. Good. Let's find out. Enter. Oh, value subscription. This is doing nothing for me. Yeah. So what's wrong? Basically, what it did is that. For each match, it uh, gives it a value of zero, or, or did we just do it wrong? You tell me. Let's what are your thoughts? Well, it's given the value of subscription, so it's giving you each line that has subscription in it. Okay. But we're not actually getting the full line. We're just doing a matches. So we want to do matches uh, dot. We, we, we want to do some stuff here. Yeah. So I'm going to br break this out a little bit. In fact, I'm just going to copy and paste my example here, just so it <laughs> save you time. Uh, essentially, what's going to happen here is. I wanted to show you one step by step, but I, I had this uh, indication that I think that I'm going to probably take a lot more time than uh, I think I will when I'm typing it by hand. We stumbled just as often when creating. It's just a good sign that regex is a trial and error thing. Once you have it fine-tuned, it is immensely powerful, but it, it does take a, lo a lot of uh, finagling to get there. Turns out I cannot copy and paste between this uh, machine, so this is fun. I'll type this by hand. So in this case, we're going to do we're going to match we're going to create a grouping inside of parentheses. So okay. groups are fantastic because they allow you to get individual matches. And so when you look at that uh, matches variable or look at the values of the matches, you can actually say, oh, I want this particular match or this grouping match or this grouping match. And that's what we're going to do here. So the first part we want to actually match uh, subscription. And I believe the thing was expires, if I recall. Does that sound about right? Yeah, uh, we put shortcuts. So it's uh, yeah, subscription expires, and then it's dot. Plus. Dot plus. Which is any character uh, till the end of the line, basically. Yep. Uh, that's exactly what that means. We're going to create another group where we're going to find the date for this. In this case, we're just going to do a, a digit, a numeric character, which is backslash D. So you could actually do backslash D dash D dash D to do, you know, character, 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 character. Well, counting's hard. Four <laughs> characters um, to get the year. You can also express it yeah, using uh, the um, squirrely brackets to say, I want this to happen. Four times. I want four digits, right? And then I want the little character of the dash. We'll do it again. And we'll do a two. You missed a closing squarely bracket around the first four. Thank you. This is why we have people watching me as I type. Do, and then we're going to do a dash. And then dash two. Backslash D, two, that. Does that look about right? I think so, yeah. And this is just trial and error from we know the date format and we don't care about the time because it's always going to be zero. Let's see. Good thing it's working. Yeah. We love doing stuff live. Oh, so they're both in a group. This is fun. So <laughs> part of the thing is we tested this before, I promise. <laughs> uh, but apparently this copy and paste doesn't work, so I might be tape typing something incorrectly here. How many thoughts, Jordan? Uh, well, for matches, I mean, it didn't come up with anything, but we also have to specify the grouping that we called. But yeah. Hey, Colby, yeah, you're watching this. Do you have any thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I. I don't see anything yet. Yeah, I'm, I mean uh, that looks that looks correct. How about you, the audience at home? What do you guys think? You know, for two hundred points. So you've got oh, uh, you got an extra squirrely. Yeah, you got a squirrely bracket too. at the end. There we go. Thank you. This is why you don't <laughs> inebriate before uh, PowerShell. <laughs> uh, thank you, JJ. Yes, thank you. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna call out. This is why I like my cheat sheet. Yeah. This is why I like to, to do this in practice is because even though I've used regular expressions for years, both inside PowerShell and outside of PowerShell, stuff goes wrong and you're going to have to take a you know, fine tooth comb and go through it and look at it. I'm glad that I actually had that happen in life. Yeah, so if we had put this in the Regex 101 with the data set, it actually would have told us where the error was coming from. Exactly. It would have, it would have uh, fine tuned it for us. Yes, because what we're looking for here is this result in the index of zero here. Uh, it's basically saying that's what was found was that subscription dot expires a bunch of white space a colon a space and then the date the format we're looking at but if you look at the second index here we actually get the exact value that you want so we can go back to our command and inside the uh, script block for matches we can just say I just want that second one and voila I have my date in fact I could store this say oh my fancy date equals that so now henceforth I have my fancy date yeah yeah. yeah, it's not a date itself. Like you'd have to cast it as a date time object. Right now, it's just a string. Yeah. Uh, you can verify that for those PowerShell Git member. 
and scroll back up and look, hey, you're a string. You could also use git type, but I'm lazy, so. Yeah, and, and to cast it to a date, I think if you just put uh, square bracer date time. I'm sure, date time, you can do that. Yeah, I think. Or, will, excuse me, on the last command. Yeah, and I think that will give it to, uh, that will convert it to a date on the fly for you. Yay, and then now it's my fancy dates, and it's actually in the date format itself, so <laughs> that's a good, good call. Uh, with that, oh, you know what? I'm actually gonna use this date to, uh, as an example that I want to show. Uh, I don't know how many questions we have today, so I don't know if we want to space those. Should we fill in a question, or am I good to go on? Okay, let's do a question. To be continued. Dear Chris and Jordan, what are some of the best formatting practices you use when writing functions? Sincerely, Anthony, you can call me Tony L. <laughs> Hello, Anthony, and uh, that's a great question. So, um, I think if you go and read my blogs, do not that. The opposite, in fact. No. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, one of the great things is, uh, so if you're using code, um, I'm sure uh, these two are more familiar with code than I am because I'm such a traditionalist, old school, you know, get off my lawn type. I haven't quite made the transition to code because I don't dive into PowerShells often. So in, just before I ask these guys, in PowerShell ISE, one of the things I like to do, if you right click and do start snippets or use the hot key control J, it'll pull up this bunch of examples here. You can look for a function, it's going to give you the basic thing. I would recommend coming up here to what's, what it says the commandlet, which is the advanced function or even the complete one. And then you can actually have a complete skeleton of what maybe it could look like. That's a good format. That's kind of the same format that you're going to see across modules or, or scripts that are shared online. Um, I'm sure code does something similar. Yeah? Yay? Nay? Yeah, so, so code can do the entire a function layout like that, or if you're doing your own parameter, it will fill out just the parameter section if that's what you're working on. Uh, VS Code really does a lot of the, the formatting for you. Cool. So that's a big thing. This, obviously, the top part here is uh, you know, adding help to this particular advanced commandlet. Um, here's the verb, or excuse me, the, uh, the name of the function you can give, as well as any of the, the commandlet binding, which is important for it to be, to use the, what are they called, the common uh, uh, commandlet parameters. Yeah. Um, additionally, you can add parameters, and then with those, you can add parameter options and go on forth. In fact, one of the things I want to show you is one of the parameter options. Uh, I'm not going to use this advanced example, so I just hit Control Z to undo. I'm going to just use the snippet for the really simple function. Yay, my function! But in fact, I'm actually going to bring the parameters down and this up because I like one true brace style. But that's okay. Another topic. Another day. <laughs> I'm going to say param there, and then within here. Uh, what is it? Validate pattern? Is that correct? Does that sound right? I think so, yeah. Or is, it, is there a... Uh, does it use... Yeah. Okay. I'm familiar with that. Uh, so let's say we're using a string. Well, he's working out... Basically what he's doing is he's going to add regex to his parameter. So if you're getting data you don't want, it will reject, reject that. Yeah. So let's say get expiration date. So let's actually call this expiration date. This is why I wanted to use the other one because a date's a good example for this for validating the pattern that we just made. In this case, let's say, oh, we just want to do your license expires in days. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, yeah, so uh, let's say, um, we'll just call it the date diff or something. Um, we want to find the difference between uh, maybe now, this very moment, and the date that you're going to input. So maybe I want to create a new, uh, what is it, add, uh, is it time span? So it's a new time span, is this, yeah, new time span. Start, we want to start with maybe get date, actually get date, what do you want to do, add days. Nice. I'm talking while I'm doing this, I talk out loud while I do this. Uh, the big thing is I want to start, what am I doing, get days, get date now, I want now. <laughs> this is what I do with scotch, this is great. Um, yeah, between you, you've lost me what you're going for, so I'll, I'm along for the ride. Yeah, Jordan has no idea what I'm doing. I just decided this last minute as well and do because we're we're talking, doing stuff. The end date is going to be the expiration date itself, um, okay. and then we'll close that and say days. Yes. So we're going to find the difference between now get date the start date and the end, which the license. I'm assuming the expiration date's in the future. You could clean this up. I'm not going to make it complex and and do all the things for you because that would take time. But in this case, we're just going to compare the two dates, but when you feed in that parameter of expiration date, which is here, it's going to validate with a, with a pattern that we haven't put in. So I'm going to go grab that. So here, for this last one we did, my fancy date, 
we use this pattern uh, for the date of slash D, you know, all this fun stuff. I'm just going to copy that directly. So, I'm going to say, if you don't match this pattern, get out of here, and you can't work. So, let's try it. I'm going to run this script to create this, um, oh, no, actually, before I do that, in date diff days. So, cool, I'm going to run this, create uh, new you, function. You again, want to change the variable built to no longer have date time, because that mixes away from our validation pattern. Oh. I guess we haven't done it in well, IC yet. We did I, that in the standard. Well, let's just say, even before I do that, let's just do the get expiration date, which is now my, my function, right? I can feed in the expiration date. I can do it manually. So let's just do it manually for now. Let's just say, oh, 2019, uh, December 12th. If I hit enter, my license expires in 174 days. Oh, no. I should set a reminder. So you could do things like this, grabbing the data from the settings that isn't inherently, you know, ingestible because it's stuck in that string inside the settings, you know, stuff. Anyway, using regular expressions, though, you can create this validate pattern parameter option inside a function so you can say to only accept a particular format. So going back to what Jordan was saying here with our other example, which let's try copying and pasting it here, maybe. It's worked so well for us so far. I'm hopeful. <laughs> so in this case, let's do my fancy date. So let's say we have, I'll just put it up here, paste it. My fancy date equals that. And then we're going to say get expiration date, expiration date, my fancy date. Let's run. Oh, hello. Something happened. Exploded. We need to cast it as a date. Oh, it's it didn't match. Right yeah. Oh, I want it to be a string. Oh, you want it to be a string. Yeah, because it actually returns a string. I think it's because of uh, you copied and pasted oh. it from the, the window. So you need to. You have a, a, a rogue new line in there. Yeah. Thank you. <sighs> Thank you so much. All right. This is why other people do things for me. <laughs> Run the console. script. Your right. license, this, apparently this license we're using expires in 103 days. All right, that's good to know. Cool, cool. And that's actually using all of our fancy stuff here. In 102 days, we'll get right on it. Oh my goodness. Uh, do we have any other questions? I, wow, time's flying. <laughs> <laughs> Dear Chris and Jordan, is there a way to run a PowerShell script and have the results emailed similar to report emailing? If so, is there a way to only email scripts that return a result and not zero result scripts? Thanks, Brad. Boom, boom, M. Hi, Brad. Hey, sure, there's plenty of ideas. There's plenty of options here. I mean, do you have any thoughts before uh, I dive so in? So the way I did this, uh, mostly the last job, is I would take the variable that was the data that would be the body of the email, and I would convert that to HTML, which if you're using Outlook, I don't know about other browsers, would make it so it would be an HTML table that would have all the uh, formatting you're looking for in there. Well, that's good for the email, but I think the question is actually sent around. Can you pull that up back up just for a second? Just let me read through that again. Is there, is there a way to, have, to run a PowerScripts and have the results emailed similar to report emailing? Yes. Use the formatting he's talking about, but is there a way to do it? Yeah. There's actually a built-in command that called send mail message. It has all these wonderful parameters that you can go through, BCC, CC, body is HTML, you can attach things, who it's from, who it's to, the world's your oyster at this point. Um, you just have to separate your logic from your script, either whatever's calling the script, the results of that, sending an email, or within the script itself, doing something. So, for example, let's say you have result equals one, two, three, because that's a good result. Did you have something to say? Sorry. Yeah, so, and wasn't that, and so your question on if it's, uh, if there's no data, don't do it. Before you convert that to HTML, just do uh, compare it to null. And if the variable that you've created is null, it will, it, you can uh, have it end right there. No value, no email, <laughs> else all the values, <laughs> all the emails, and then send mail, message, whatever. Then you can feed in from other things from your script. You can load it from another, another script, a module, whatever. Um, but the point here is, is the result is going to equal one, two, three. We're going to set that. It's going to do a comparison against null. On the left here, PS Script Analyzer will tell you why, or maybe it won't tell you why, just tell you to do this. You have to go Google why, like we talked about in the pre-show. Was that pre-show? Anyway, um, it's going to go. We're going to run this and see what happens. And we're not actually going to send a mail message because we don't have that configured, so yeah. run. All the values, all the emails, yeah, because it had a value. Yeah. yeah, so with that one where you can convert the data where you need, you can send an email that looks Pretty clean. I did it for uh, as Exchange Administrator, and I sent a lot of reports yeah. that way. Uh, you can cut this down if you're really, if you're you know concerned about space. You could just do the invert of the comparison. So if not, you know that 
emails. Um, then you can run it and actually have all the emails. But again, it's just all about uh, thinking through the logic uh, comparison what's going on, as well as comparing the result uh, properly. If that, I think that's what he's going for, and then combine so. with what Jordan's saying with like, build the HTML email to make it look pretty. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, do we have any other questions? Oh, hey, Chris and Jordan, how would you get user info from AD, like getting their phone numbers? Sincerely, Jim L. All right, so on, on this one, you're going to have to have the admin pack installed, which gives you the AD tools. And then it's get AD user, and you can specify the name on that one. Oh, uh, we don't have it on here. Oh. Uh, yeah, and then the, the important thing with the Active Directory pack, which isn't normal for most, not every attribute is available every time. So if the phone number is not there, you may have to specify dash properties and then the attribute name for that phone number and then it will load that in when you do the search. Yeah. And then from there you should be able to grab what you're looking for. Yep. Just pull it up on uh, any one of many sites here, get yeah. a user. You're going to find so much information about it. So, but like he's saying, specify the attributes. So, since I cut my teeth learning PowerShell with Active Directory, I thought that was standard behavior and I was trying to call properties all the time well beyond where it was needed. <laughs> Turns out you so, can't, otherwise. So it is, I don't know about, I think for most things it's not that way, but for Active Directories, they give you very few parameters out of, out of the gate. Yeah, filter and then you do the stuff, yeah. And cool, good question though. I know that's not a specific answer, but we don't have ADU, get AD user installed, the Active Directory module. Um, but if you have any questions about that, shoot up our support. I mean, we'd be happy to help you. Yeah. And if you're not sure what the name of the property is, because it's not always intuitive, you can just do dash properties star and grab a single user, and it will print all of the properties for you, and you can find the one you want there. Good to go. Wild card. I have so much I want to cover, but <laughs> it's let's let's do questions. Let's, let's let's make sure people get answers to what they're looking for. Maybe. Dear Chris and Jordan. <laughs> I am uninstalling a program with a PowerShell script and PDQ deploy, but the PowerShell script hangs. Is there a way to end the PowerShell script and move on to the next step? Perhaps a close command of some sort? Sincerely, Sam P. Uh, good question. Um, it depends what's going on and why it's hanging. Yeah. Do you have any thoughts? Well, it, it, it is a tough one, because if it's hanging and it's never telling you that it's completed, then you're going to have to basically do a, a countdown to say automatically cancel this after a certain number of time. Uh, Other thoughts are if you're doing something that pops something up interactively with a user or with a, with a session that's you know, popping up even though it's not visible on the computer, it's going to hang because it's expecting someone to interact with it. So a common use case you'll see with our installs uh, where someone's building a, a PDQ deploy package from scratch is they'll do the setup.exe or whatever it is, but they won't pass in the silent parameters. It'll pop up that silent, you know, or excuse me, the setup window, just waiting for someone to click the next button, but no one ever does because that user's not actually logged in. Yeah, yeah. or even if you're using deploy, if you're not using interactive, it will pop up, but not where anyone logged in can see it. Right, and so the same thing <coughs> can happen with PowerShell, so depending upon what you're doing. Uh, I'd be more than happy to, you know, take a look at this. I mean, feel free to hit up our forum or our support. I mean, it's... This is one of my things that I love. I know Colby loves this kind of stuff, solving problems. I mean, that's what we do here, is uh, think through uh, problems. But it all depends on what's hanging. Like, why is it hanging? Is it hanging when you call PowerShell.exe? Is it hanging when you call a particular script? Is it hanging because you're trying to access a file that it can't access for some reason? I mean, there's, there's a lot of different things that can happen. So, I, I know that's not a specific answer. I hope it gives you direction. And if you do have any more specific, you know, questions, please, uh, you know, bring them, raise them up to us. We're happy to help. Okay, okay, good. Yes, exactly. Nice. Right. So, um, I think we have to suit, decide which of our examples here. <laughs> There's so many. There's so few. Ah, what am I going to do? Okay, ah. this is kind of a fun one. Yeah. Going back to bad data that we get from, from places. Uh, this is a quick one. Quick, yeah. <laughs> um, I'll just delete this guy. Let's say you have a bunch of bad data. Or let's say you have a CSV, right? Mm -hmm. So, I'm just going to use Chris, comma, you know, Jordan, comma, Colby, and others. You have a string. You get something back. It's a CSV. This is what it looks like. There's no headers, right? So in this case, normally if you're like, hey, I want to split those out, it's pretty easy. You just say split and then you split on the comma, right? A lot of you who use PowerShell probably use this, right? Yep. Uh, one thing to call out, well, we're, we're filling that one out. With split, if you use dash split, it will use regex. If you use the method where you put it in parentheses and you do dot split, that's no longer using regex. <laughs> so if it, anytime you can you can call it with the dash dash command, it will yeah, we'll keep work it that for you. Yeah. Um, this is a quick way to do it, but even though it's just saying comma, the funny thing that you probably don't know is, and I say funny because it's funny to me, 
is uh, that's actually using reg expressions right now. It's matching the character comma. Eh, you might not know that. But the cool thing is, is you can do some fancy things. So that, let's say you have a bunch of garbage data. So you have, what do you want to throw in? Um, what, I don't even know. Let's do colons and, and semicolons. Oh my goodness, I'm just crazy. <laughs> um, we're going to throw in some super per, uh, commas. <laughs> like, I, wow. Contrived example 101 right here. Yeah. But I've had data pumped out. Uh, one of my, my jobs before I worked here is I managed the, the dialing system for a mid-sized call center. And a lot of times we imported lead information and got you know this stuff that we're pumping into our database, to our system. It was so not sanitized and, 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 and super ugly. And so I'd have to take stuff like this and break down, okay, what can I clear out here? Because if I do split on the comma like we did before, you're gonna get not what you expect, yeah. right? What, what do you suggest? What do you think, Jordan? So this is what we wanted to talk about earlier. The uh, capital W is all non-word characters. Backslash capital W. Backslash capital W. And then I believe you want to do plus, because that basically lets you know as many non-word characters as you can. One or more. One or more. Up to infinity. Yep. Let's do it. Split! And we got the C because the semicolons are between yeah. Colby, but... Yeah, I, well, yeah. I, oops. <laughs> I added those between names, apparently. So it's... Only as good as you think through it. In this quick example, that's as good as we got. <laughs> uh, but if you got garbage data, you can clean it up this way. You can actually go through and do uh, use regular expressions to replace those and then do a split. I mean, there's there's a lot of options here. There's the sky's the limit. I'm sure, Colby, you've encountered stuff like this before. Yeah. Yeah, and have you done something similar or have an example? <laughs> Uh, right off the top of my head now. Okay, good. See, we've all had it. Yeah. When we get to these points, just like when we talked about when we first opened the, the webcast, is it's hard to remember examples because they're so frustrating and annoying, and then you finally solve them and never remember them and yeah. think about them again. And and the important thing is, if you've ever used split, replace, or match, yep. you can't say you've never used regex because technically you have. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, there's so many more examples I want to give, but I, this is not enough time yep. in the day. If you guys have any exact uh, questions, let us know. Yep. Uh, bring it up. Maybe we'll do a second part two webcast on specific yeah, questions. So, yeah, yeah, so this was going to more of the basics, but if we're looking for a deep dive, we'd be happy to do that. Just let us know, and we can, we can definitely dive into that. Yeah, good call. So, I'm Chris. I'm Jordan. And we'll see you on the flip side. Bye. Thanks for joining our webcast today. Congratulations, Anthony L. and Jim L., no relations. Winners of PDQ swag, send us your info at webcast at pdq.com. If you have additional questions, feel free to reach out to our support team. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you back here next week.